Hello and welcome back. In this unit we're going to look at creating tables in Excel 2013. We'll look at how to move between using tables and ranges and how to add and remove cells within tables and in particular insert and delete rows and columns. Now before we get into the detail of this unit I'd just like to remind you about something. Right near the beginning of the course I pointed you at a page on Microsoft.com with details of the Excel 2013 77420 exam. And I also pointed out that within those details you will normally see a list of skills measured and I've currently opened this list at Create Tables. And this basically indicates the sequence of the units that I'm going to be covering from now on on Tables. Just below that part of the list of skills there are some preparation resources and each of these is a link to some help either in the form of pretty straightforward help or in the form of a straightforward tutorial available from Microsoft.com and as I pointed out to you right near the beginning I do suggest that you get into the habit of looking at all of those there have of course been some of those already for the earlier parts of the course Generally speaking, they don't go into as much detail as I do, but they do give a different outlook. and They are links to official Microsoft information, so I do really encourage you to take a look at each of those alongside working through the course with me. When you're working on data in Excel 2013, you're generally working in two dimensions with rows and columns. And if you look at the data that I've got here, it's got straightforward information about 10 African countries and I can look up for instance the population of Nigeria or the official language of Libya quite easily. These are the sort of things you would do with a database and in fact you can use Excel as a very straightforward flat file type of database and generally speaking one of the most straightforward ways of doing this is to convert this data into a table. And what we're going to look at in this unit and the next couple is how to use tables in Excel 2013. Now bearing in mind that you may not be particularly familiar with databases let me explain the basic principle of what we're going to do here. Each row here represents an entity, a country and the first country here is Egypt and we have certain attributes what the main religion in Egypt is what the official language there may be many official languages but this is the language that is spoken most commonly we have a rounded figure for the millions of people in the population and then we have a rounded to the nearest hundred dollars GDP per person these attributes of Egypt these fields correspond to the columns in our worksheet and when we turn this range of data into a table each column in the table will be an attribute or a field and each row will be a record so we'll have a row for Egypt and a row for Algeria and a row for Morocco and so on. In order to make this work best what you really need is to have a heading on every column so I'm going to put a heading of country at the top there. The formatting really doesn't matter for reasons that will become apparent in a moment. But just to avoid confusion what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the formatting of B1 using the format painter to A1 and then I'm going to clear the formatting on these countries. I don't want to imply that these country names are some sort of heading. They're just another feature of each of the countries. So the name of Egypt, which is Egypt, is just one of its attributes, one of its fields. So I'm going to clear the formatting and then I'll just put the font size back to 14. And I have something now that's a bit more representative of what will become our database. Having set up the data, I'm now going to create a table. So, first of all, select the data that I want to use. Then on the Insert tab, click on Table, and I see the Create Table dialog. In the Create Table dialog, first question, where is the data for your table? 
Well, the range is shown A1 to E11, that's correct, so I don't need to change that. If I hadn't made the correct selection beforehand, obviously I could change that now. And the other important point there is that at the top of each column I have a header, which basically is the name for each column, for each field, for each attribute. That's ticked to show that my table has headed. Click on OK and my table is created. Now when the table is created, a number of things happen and one of them is that you have a contextual design tab. It's marked up here as Table Tools and you can use the commands on this tab to do a number of things to a table and we're going to look at a couple of those in just a moment. Now before we do some more work on that table, I'd like to show you an alternative way of creating a table. And in this case, we're going to start from scratch with an empty table, basically. Now, a table doesn't have to be on its own on a worksheet. It doesn't have to be the only thing on a worksheet. It doesn't need to start in cell A1 or anything like that. You can put tables pretty much anywhere. If I select a single cell, I've selected B16, click on Insert Table. I still get the Create Table dialog. It's got a single cell selected, B16. And it can't see any sign of a header, so it hasn't checked the box My Table Has Headers. But when I click on OK, the minimum requirement for a table is actually for it to occupy two cells, because it needs a cell to hold some data, in this case B17, and it will always have a column heading shown when you create a table, which is what I've got here. Now having created that table, I have an option to resize the table. If you look in the properties group to the left of the design contextual tab, resize table will let me select a different range or in fact I can resize it by just dragging it out. So for instance if I want to make it taller or if I want to make it wider I can build it up to any size that I like and then I can subsequently type data in, change the names on the columns and so on. So you can start a table from scratch in that way. So back to our original table now. On the design tab one of the things that you can do is to rename a table. A table is given a default name which is normally table followed by a number. You can see the name in the properties group on the left on the design tab. I'm going to call this one African Demographics. And I can now refer to that table from elsewhere by that name. Now let's look at how we can make some changes to a table once we've created it. You can certainly use a sizing handle to change the size by dragging, but you also have commands to insert columns insert rows and delete columns and rows as well. If I wanted to insert a column to the left of column E, if I select column E, right click, click on insert, I get a new blank column. If I then want to change the heading on that before I put the corresponding data in, if you select the column heading, you can change the column heading either by typing directly in the cell or by using the formula bar. To insert two columns, I select two columns and the newly inserted ones will be inserted to the left of the selection. So right click, click on insert, I have two new columns. I'll just, as usual, do an undo there. And if I want a column at the right hand end, so in what is currently column F on the worksheet, all I need to do is to type a heading in here. So let's suppose I wanted to put in here, once I've typed my heading in, if I press the enter key, then automatically, provided I've typed in the header cell there, Excel 2013 gives me an additional column at the right hand end of my table. Now I'm sure you won't be surprised to learn that as far as rows are concerned, there are no big surprises. If you wanted to insert a row, say above row seven, Select row 7, right click, insert, you get a blank row above. Obviously if I'd selected more than one, I'd get more than one inserted above. 
and to get a row at the end it works pretty much the same it does with a lot of components of Office 2013 if you select say the cell F11 put the cursor in there press the tab key you get a new row at the end and incidentally in terms of adding a row at the end an alternative is to just type in the first cell of the row beyond the bottom of the table as soon as you press the tab key the row that you've just typed into becomes a row within the table and the table is extended accordingly when it comes to moving things you need to be a little bit careful supposing I wanted to put Libya up before Morocco if I cut Libya so having selected the row I click on cut and then select Morocco and think I'm going to insert Libya before Morocco if you just do a paste so that's control V it actually overwrites Morocco and you've lost it so let me undo that let me go back and cut Libya again if instead of doing that paste when I right click on Morocco I do insert cut cells then what it does is to do a proper insert so Libya goes in before Morocco and the space left by Libya is filled by everything else moving down so you need to use the insert cut cells command for that to work correctly again if I right click on Angola and do cut if you go to the home tab in the cells group one of the options on the drop down there is insert cut cells insert cut cells is very important in Excel 2013 because it does a move it actually moves whatever it is that's in the way out of the way rather than overwriting it deleting it and when it comes to moving columns pretty much the same principles apply I'll leave you to experiment with that if you need to delete a row or column that's pretty straightforward if you select the row or rows right click there is a delete option select the column or columns right click there is a delete option there as well and as with just about everything else in Excel 2013 it's always good to look around for those other options those other ways of doing things if you have a single cell selected in a table and right click there are quite a few things on the contextual menu for instance on the insert you have a flyout insert table columns to the left or table rows above so you can do either with a single cell selected and with delete you can say delete table columns or delete table rows so make sure to have a good look around at what all of the various options are when you've got a particular selection within Excel now there are just a couple of other things to quickly point out to you one of them is that if you've got a table in Excel it's very straightforward to convert it back to being a range again if you right click within the table and there is a table menu and one of the options on the table menu is convert to range and if I click on convert to range I get a confirmation question I click on yes and everything is just back to being a range again its existence as a table is gone I've got a cell selected inside here and as you can see I've no longer got the contextual tab because it's no longer a table and one thing that I didn't point out earlier on but which is also well worth knowing about if you have a range which I now have on the home tab in the styles group there is a format as table option and this will also convert the range to a table just as we did before but it enables us to do it in a formatted way so we could choose from a gallery of formats let's click on format as table and you can choose from a very large gallery of table styles we'll be looking at the styles in a little bit more detail in a moment but let's choose one of those now let's choose say that one confirm the range table as headers etc click on OK and now we have a table which is formatted according to one of the gallery styles not a particularly good one I would say because you can barely see some of the numbers on the background but that's converting a range to a formatted table so your next exercise I'd like you to take case study 2 version 11 remove row 1 the one with mileage written in it we think we know what we mean by miles and cost as the headings 
columns G and column H and I want you to convert the resulting range to a table. So clearly the actual dates will be attributes on the table, fields on the table, description of expense, entries like travel to Bourne & Co, lunch with Matthews, they will be attributes of the table as well. And the various fields of the table include airfare, meals and miscellaneous. And my answer to that is version 12 of case study 2. In this unit we've looked at how to create tables in Excel 2013. We've seen how to turn a range into a table and a table back into a range again. And we've also seen how to add, move and delete cells, columns and rows within tables. That's the end of this unit. Please join me for the next one.